Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and once again I'm coming to you with another range report. And today's range report obviously is on something pretty unique and special. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Silencer Co. Maxim 9. This is an intricately suppressed semi-automatic pistol chambered in 9mm. And for those of you that don't know what that means, it means the silencer is built into the frame or the body of the firearm, and it's not attached using a threaded barrel or some other type of QD mechanism. So this silencer is always with this gun. You can't take it off, and it is part of the gun itself. This thing definitely looks futuristic. I know it's been used as a prop in some movies, but it looks like it's something from 100 years in the the future and so I'm really excited to get a chance to shoot this thing and see if it suppresses as well as some people say it does. Now Silencer Co. is a company that I've always been interested in and in many ways they've always been my favorite silencer company. When I got into guns about 12 or 13 years ago and then discovered the world of NFA, they were the first company I looked at to buy a silencer from. In fact, my first silencer was a Silencer Co. Octane 9 HD. And when Silencer Co. hit the market, I think they were a very innovative company. And while, of course, they were not the first company ever to make a silencer, I think they came into the marketplace trying to make NFA items cool and accessible to a wider audience. Before then, silencers were kind of relegated to niche collectors. But they wanted to do things that nobody else was doing. They've always been innovative. So, for example, they were the first company to make a commercially viable 12-gauge shotgun silencer. Nothing like that existed before. And another one of their projects was the Maxim 9, an intricately suppressed semi-automatic pistol. And so I've always liked Silencer Co., even though I think they're a victim of their own success. When they came onto the market and they were so successful and doing so well, other companies saw the blood in the water. They realized they could make so much money doing what Silencer Co. did. Hey, they can make innovative silencers too. They could take it to the next level. And of course, then Silencer Co. had a ton of competition like you see today in the world of NFA items. But they're still around, they're still innovating, and they're still making great products. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at this intricately suppressed Maxim 9, just something different. And I'm so excited to get to take this to the range and shoot it. So as always, before we get to the range and talk about the things that I like and don't like, as always, I wanna thank the people that make these videos possible. First and foremost is the owner of this really cool pistol. His name is Jack and he lent it to the channel. In fact, he went way above and beyond for this one because this is an NFA item. He has to be here for me to film this and go to the range. So he was part of the entire process of this video. So thank you so much, Jack, for your time. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters because through their monthly donations and support, they help keep the lights on around here. I couldn't do it without them. And if you guys want to see all of these videos early, you can join my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. And there's going to be a link in the description below. And as always, I want to thank my primary sponsor who always provides all of the ammunition for these range reports, thus making them financially feasible for me, my good friend Mark from Brownworks. And if you're here watching this video on this really cool Silencer Co. Maxim 9, well, I know you like cool guns. And most likely, you have a collection of really cool guns yourself. You probably own a Colt 1911, a CZ-75 Browning High Power, or Beretta 92. And you've been thinking to yourself, I would love a set of custom wood panel grips for my fine firearm. Well, I have the perfect company for you, Brownworks. Brownworks is a custom grip company making grips to order one at a time out of exotic woods, laminate woods. Mark over there is an artist. He's a craftsman. He can put on custom logos, custom textures. He can even apply exotic materials like alligator skin and snake skin. Every grip is unique and anything you can imagine, Mark can make. 
So I'm going to put a link to his website in the comment section below, as well as a coupon code for 10% off your first order. I'm going to ask you guys to go over there and see what he has to offer. I guarantee you, you will be really impressed and have to have a set of his grips. So please go over there, contact Mark, tell him what you're looking for, and when you do, please tell him the Texas Gun Vault sent you. All right, so let's talk about this gun that we're going to be getting to take to the range today. We're taking a look at the Silencer Co. Maxim 9 intricately suppressed semi-automatic pistol chambered in 9mm. And I know a few of you guys are going to ask in the comments, does it take Glock mags? Well, guess what? This gun actually does. In fact, if you have some of those long 33 round stick mags, you can use those too. I know some people are gonna absolutely love that. Now, as always, I like to talk about the things that I like and don't like, and I always wanna start with the positive first. And the first thing I absolutely love about this pistol is its innovation. One of the things I always complain about, especially around SHOT Show, is that I think the firearms world is getting really stale. Companies every year announce their new guns, but what are they? They're just another AR-15. Oh look, another 2011. It just now comes in a different frame size, or now a threaded barrel, or a different color. But it's essentially the same old gun. Very rarely do you get gun companies making something that's completely different. Sometimes they're failures, and that's okay, but at least they're pushing the envelope. They're trying something new, and that's how we're going to progress as a gun community. So I really love the fact that Silencer Co. was thinking out of the box with this gun. You have to admit, there is no other gun out there that you would ever confuse this with. That has a unique silhouette. That is really cool, and I really give a lot of props to Silencer Co. for that. Now, when it comes to the silencer part of this firearm, I love the fact it is user serviceable. One of the trends in the silencer world today that I don't like is so many companies are coming out with non-serviceable suppressors. I know it has to deal with warranty. People will say, ah, oh, you don't gotta take your suppressors apart. They run better dirty anyway. Well, I'm kind of an OCD guy. I like to have my guns completely cleaned. And let me tell you, after taking this to the range, this is probably the dirtiest firearm you will ever fire. And so being able to take this apart is really important and you can take off the suppressor portion of this pistol using these two screws up front and there's a couple of rods that go through the silencer. In fact, I'm gonna be doing a field strip video on this as well and I'll show you how to take it apart. But this is user serviceable and I think that is an outstanding feature. You'll also notice it is cut for an optic. I know so many people are going to like that. And I'm also a big fan of the grip texture. It looks like randomized lines. It's not too coarse, it's not too gritty, but it's also not too smooth. This is about the right type of texturing I like on modern striker-fired polymer pistols. It feels really good, big fan of that. And I'm also a huge fan of the trigger. So let me show you this trigger on camera first. Let me, of course, go ahead and safety check the fire. Looks like we are good. So our take up is actually a little bit stiff, but once you hit that wall, it is predictable and it is crisp. And then the reset is relatively short and it is tactile and audible. And then you're right back at that wall. I like this trigger a lot. Yeah, it's a really nice uh, trigger. Might not be the lightest trigger in the world, but it feels pretty good. In fact, I want to adjust the camera now and I want to test this trigger and actually see how heavy it is. So I'm gonna get out the lineman trigger pull weight gauge and get some more data on this trigger before we talk about the things about this pistol that maybe I don't like as much as other things. So let me go ahead and adjust the camera now and let's see how heavy this trigger is. All right, so let's test out the trigger on this Silencer Co. Maxim 9. And I do want to say before I start, this might be a little bit difficult to get consistent readings because the face of this trigger is flat. And sometimes that makes it a little bit hard with this gauge to put it on the same spot every single time. And sometimes it wants to move around. So I might do more than five pulls just to see if I can get a better average. 
But of course, we'll drop the magazine, ensure there's no ammunition in it, and then we will visually inspect the chamber, and it looks like we are good. I will now clear the average on the gauge, and let's get some pulls here and see if I can make this as consistent as possible. Five pounds, 13.8 ounces. Six pounds, 15.6 ounces. And we can see a big variation there, and that's just because of the placement of this gauge. Five pounds, 14.8 ounces. Six pounds, 11.5 ounces. Let's do a few more. Six pounds, 12.9 ounces. Six pounds, 15.1 ounces. And one more pull should give us enough data. Six pounds, 13.4 ounces, which gives us an average of six pounds, 9.3 ounces. So it is kind of a heavy trigger. I told you on that take up, there is a lot of resistance, but it's not gritty. And if you like flat face triggers, you're probably gonna like this one. But this is the best data that I could possibly get that's the most consistent. I'm sure if it had a curved face to it, I might be able to get a little bit more consistent data, but I definitely think it would be above six and a half pounds. So I think this is relatively accurate. So that's what the trigger pull is on this particular pistol. So let's get back to the rest of this range report. So that's the information on this trigger. As you can see, it is a little bit heavy, especially if you're used to polymer striker fired handguns that have about a five and a half pound trigger pull. This is gonna feel a little bit heavier to you. But now let's talk about a few things about this gun that I don't like. In fact, there's only two things about this gun that honestly, I'm not a fan of. The first off, I already talked about before. This gun gets exceptionally dirty. I know, I'm kind of spoiling the review before I get to the end. But after getting this thing back from the range, let me tell you, this thing was absolutely filthy. The action of this gun is just full of carbon. It is everywhere, and it is full of particulate from the unspent powder. It really was crazy. And you could tell at the end of the range report because the ejection port all around it was black. Now, personally, I like flat dark earth guns, but I think if I was gonna own this gun, I might want it in black just because it's gonna hide a lot of that fouling. The other thing about this gun that I'm not really a big fan of is the fact that it's pretty much a range toy. I know there are holster companies out there that make holsters for this gun, but this gun is exceptionally big and exceptionally thick for what it is, and I understand why. I'm not blaming Silencer Co. for designing it the size that it is. However, the size, I think, relegates this to being just a range toy. I guess you could say it might work as a home defense pistol, but beyond that, I just don't think it's that practical. Now that doesn't mean the gun doesn't have a place in your collection or the gun is inherently bad. But I know for many people, if you're gonna spend the money on a gun like this and of course get the tax stamp for this gun because it is technically a silencer, you're gonna to wanna to be able to use it in a lot of applications. A lot of people aren't gonna have giant gun collections where they have one gun for a specific purpose. People might wanna buy this gun as a do-all gun. It's fun at the range, I could carry it. It'd be a good home defense gun. Well, not really. I think it's kind of a range toy. It's definitely cool, it's definitely high quality. I just don't know how practical it 
is. But who knows, after going to the range, my thoughts on that may change. But speaking about going to the range, let's do that now. As always with my pistol reviews, I want to load up one of these magazines, set the target up at seven yards, and just get my initial thoughts and impressions. See if this gun actually runs. Does it work well? Is it accurate? And with this gun, how well does it suppress? So here we go. Let's go to the range and see what the first shots are like. All right, and I know some of the first questions I'm going to get is, Jason, why were you wearing hearing protection if it's a silenced pistol? Well, I was at a public range, and there were other people at the range shooting unsuppressed firearms, so I did need to use hearing protection. Now, a couple things about this gun that I did notice, in fact, I even tried to film this before the footage you saw, and I was making sure the gun did this, but on a loaded magazine, if the slide is open, sometimes when I insert the magazine, the slide closed. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. I don't know if that is part of the design, but this is something that happened almost every single time. So maybe it's designed to be that way, and maybe you like your guns to do that. Personally, I'm not a big fan of that. Now, when it comes to the shooting experience of this gun, it was actually pretty darn pleasurable. It's a big gun and it's suppressed, and so the recoil is pretty minimal. The suppressor works pretty well, but the thing I was really surprised about is the tone. Now, I was using 124 grain ball ammunition in this first magazine, and the tone was kind of high. I like the tone of my suppressors to be a little bit lower. Now, I don't have all of the equipment to actually gauge the decibel levels, but I would also say this seemed a little bit on the louder side, especially compared to my Silencer Co. Octane 9 HD. Now, it's not bad. I'm pretty sure it's going to be hearing safe, but what makes me think it sounds louder could be that higher pitch. But once you start shooting suppressed guns, you kind of know what I'm talking about. The tone is almost more important than the actual overall decibel level. Now, when it comes to the accuracy, the group was a little bit bigger at seven yards than I really want it to be, but hopefully I'll be able to dial that in. So let's go ahead now and double the distance on this target. I'm going to load up another magazine and just go for the center of the target, see what happens to this group, and see if I discover anything else about this gun that I like or don't like and I'll report back to you. Well, although that group is opening up, and I do think the point of impact is shifting, but I'm not really sure why I cannot get a good group with this. Now, I will be honest with you, I actually filmed that segment about two or three times, and that was the best I could do with this pistol. And I really felt that once I knew where the point of impact was, 
it would shift. Now, I don't know if that has anything to do with the silencer. I know attaching a silencer to a firearm typically does change the point of impact, but this firearm has the silencer on all the time. I don't know if the silencer is doing that, but it really feels like the point of impact is just all over the place on this. But I will tell you the gun is exceptionally comfortable to shoot. And of all the guns I've probably reviewed, this one would probably be in the top 10 when it comes to just how pleasurable it is. It's quiet because obviously it's suppressed. It has an okay trigger, but the recoil is so nice on this. It kind of has a nice Cadillac recoil because of the weight and the suppressor. So it is really nice from that perspective. Now I do want to see if I can get the best group possible. So the next test I'm going to do is bench rest this. Essentially, I'm going to set the target as far as I can at this indoor range, and I'm just going to shoot this from the bench or essentially from my range bag and try to take as much of the human element out of the equation as possible. So hopefully I'll be able to get a tighter group and especially because this Trigicon SRO is such a nice optic. So here we go. Let me bench rest this and let me see the results that I can get. And to my dismay, this gun is not grouping very well. I have no idea why I can't shoot it better than that. But I know some of you guys are already typing frantically in the comment section, Jason, it's because you're a horrible shot. You shouldn't be reviewing guns. Well, I'm just an average gun guy. I don't claim to be a trick shot or a competitive shooter. However, at this distance, normally I do shoot these guns better than that. And if you guys have watched my other range reports, you guys can see that evidence. I'm not 100% sure why this gun is not more accurate for me. It could be the fact it has a suppressor, but also the barrel on this is actually really short. Despite what it looks like, the barrel doesn't come out to the end. It's only about three inches, I would say. When I've taken it apart, I was surprised with how short the barrel actually is. It's not a ported or vented barrel that goes into the suppressor, so it's not like an intricately suppressed rifle. So the barrel's short, so maybe that has something to do with it? I'm not 100% certain. But now I'm kind of curious. I want to get this gun in the hands of my wife, Becky. She loves to shoot every gun that comes through the Texas Gun Vault, and I'm curious because she's often a really good shot. Is she going to shoot this better than me? Well, I'm going to load up a magazine and find out. So I'm going to set the target back at seven yards and give her a chance to shoot this and see how she does with it and see what she thinks. So here we go back to the range, and let's see how my wife does.
And I think she did pretty good at seven yards. I think her grouping was a little bit tighter than mine, but still not as good as I'm used to seeing her shoot. She liked everything about this gun. She said it was very soft shooting. She really liked the texture of the grip, and she is kind of grip sensitive when it comes to that. However, one thing she did notice that she wanted me to tell you guys about is that the trigger guard is getting kind of hot. Now, I do expect a silencer to get pretty darn warm, but after she mentioned it, I got out the laser thermometer and I was going to check the temperature right here where the trigger guard meets the frame. And I was kind of surprised by how hot it was getting. Now, I think we've only put about 60 or 70 rounds through this gun at this point, and it's all been slow fire, nothing rapid. You guys have pretty much seen everything that I've shot through it, and this gun is starting to get pretty hot. So let me show you that footage right now. And yeah, that temperature is kind of hot for where it is on the gun. You know, if you have good trigger finger discipline and when you take your finger off of the trigger and you put it on the side of the frame, well, right up there where I was measuring the temperature, it's getting up there. So that makes it a little bit uncomfortable. As I said, I expect the gun to heat up, just not as much back here towards where your finger and your hand is going to be. But I'm gonna measure how hot this gun is getting later at the end of this review. So the next test I want to do is the hollow point test. I did mention maybe this might not be the most practical firearm, but for home defense, it might be absolutely perfect. And of course, in that scenario, you want to know, is this gun going to feed hollow points? I'm pretty sure it is, but it's something that I always want to test for. So let me load up a magazine and let's make sure this thing feeds hollow points. And as expected, I had no failures whatsoever. The hollow points fed great. I had no failures to feed, failures to extract, failures to eject. And in fact, the groupings of these rounds were better than the ball ammunition, just by a little bit. I don't think it has anything to do with the projectile weight because I was running 124 with both the ball and the full metal jacket. I would say the overall accuracy of this gun falls into what I call practical accuracy. It's definitely not a target gun for me, but it's not that bad that I couldn't enjoy it or probably with enough practice get a lot better with it. All right, so the next test I want to do is the quick magazine change test. I like how these Glock mags fly right out of this gun. So I want to see how fast I can shoot it, drop the mag, get a fresh one in, and get the gun back in action. I also want to test how this gun point shoots. Essentially, I like to think about a self-defense scenario. I know a lot of us want to think that we go to the range and we train, and if we ever had to pull our gun in self-defense, we're going to be able to line up those sights, take our time, and put those shots where we want them. But in actuality, I think for most of us, when the adrenaline is pumping and you have to make a split-second decision, you're pretty much going to point the gun at what you need to stop and just pull the trigger. And in that scenario, how accurate is the gun. If I shoot this thing fast and just point shoot it, is it going to be on target? Well, I hope so. So let me see how fast I can shoot this and see if this is a naturally pointing firearm for me if I'm not using the sights. Thank you. 
and I'm really pleased with the results of that test. I can shoot this gun really fast despite it having a pretty heavy trigger. The magazines fly right out of this gun. I can get a fresh one in there, no problem whatsoever. And the shootability of this gun and how easy it is to just simply point, it's right on target. I think all those rounds were on the silhouette and I wasn't even aiming and I was just shooting this thing as fast as I possibly could. So I am pretty impressed with that. All right, so before I give you guys my final thoughts, as always, I want to give you guys a little bit of gun porn. So I'm going to change magazines. I'm going to go with the 33 round stick mag and I just want to do a quick mag dump with this. And then after the mag dump, I do want to show you how hot this gun is getting. But let's do the mag dump first. And man, was that fun. You're gonna love these 33 round stick mags. Man, that was a lot of freedom seeds going down range. I was really impressed with how fast I'm able to shoot this and keep all those rounds on target. And that was just so much fun. Now, earlier I mentioned to you, this gun is getting really, really hot. So I'm gonna get out that laser thermometer again, and I'm going to measure how hot it is getting out towards the end of this firearm. I actually think you're gonna be a little bit surprised. So let me show you that now. Now. Now, as I said, I do expect a silencer to get really, really hot. And this gun is getting really, really hot. So if you take this thing to the range and you put a couple hundred rounds through it, the end of this gun, you are not gonna be able to touch for some time. That is above the boiling point of water out there. But that's just something that goes with the territory in shooting suppressed. So what are my final thoughts on the Silencer Co. Maxim 9 intricately suppressed pistol. Well, some things about this gun I'm very impressed with. I really like the design. I like Silencer Co.'s forward thinkingness when they engineered it. I really like the fact that this gun is intricately suppressed. I think, of course, that is the big attraction to it. However, I did not shoot it as accurately as I would want to but it's a well-balanced gun. It's definitely cool. I don't think it's practical, but I think if you bought it for, let's just say a home defense application or as a range toy, I think it would serve you well. It's definitely cool. And when you pull this out at the range, people are definitely going to give you a second look and go, wow, I've never seen one of those before. That is just a cool firearm. So on my star system, how would I rate the Silencer Co. Maxim 9? Well, I'm gonna give this three out of five stars. It's not a bad review. It could have been better. And I wish the accuracy of this gun was better. If it was, it would probably get four or four and a half stars. But I was really struggling with the accuracy consistently at the range. I'm also not a big fan of if the slide is back, if if I insert the magazine, the slide goes home. I prefer the slide to stay back. And that's just something I noticed about this gun and I'm not 100% sure if that is part of the design. I would assume it's not, but that's just what I was experiencing. But the overall function of this gun was flawless. It ran great. Silencer Co. makes outstanding products. And the overall quality of this gun, I think is outstanding. When you handle it, you realize this is a serious firearm. And Silencer Co. took a lot of time in the engineering. So I really do respect that. But I think three out of five stars for the overall shooting experience of the Silencer Co. Maxim 9. So what do you guys think? Have you ever shot the Maxim 9 or ever shot an intricately suppressed pistol like this? I would love to know if your thoughts mirror mine, if you had the same experiences with it. So as always, thanks for watching.